On April 25, 1963, journalist William Seward interviewed three people who knew and heard soprano Elizabeth Rettberg. Soprano Rose Bampton remembers her from her early studies at the Curtis Institute. Conductor Eric Leinsdorf voices his appreciation for her, and memories were shared by Wagnerian heldentenor Lauritz Melchior. The listener will hear arias from Madama Butterfly, Faust, and a duet from Lohengrin with Lauritz Melchior. My apologies for the less-than-perfect sound quality. I chose to open this episode with the complete Ave Maria from Otello. Well, it's a, a great honor to be able to speak about this great artist. I first heard it when I was still a student in Curtis Institute in Philadelphia. But uh, I, I was so impressed with this woman singing. And then when I came to the Met, and my uh, first Aida that I sang, the Aida performance, I was still singing as a mezzo, and Rathberg was my soprano. And for all my performances that I did as mezzo, Rathberg was the soprano. And I was absolutely uh, enchanted and thrilled with the sound of this voice, the artistry of this woman. And I thought, oh, if I ever sang Aida, I would have to sing it like that or else I couldn't sing it. Well, I did sing it. I didn't sing it like she did, but I tried my hardest to emulate what I had heard this great woman do. And really, for me, I think she was the greatest singer that I ever heard that goes for style, for voice, for everything. It was perfection, just perfection. The line that she had, the phrasing that she did, and there was never a note that wasn't beautiful and that wasn't expressive. And I've heard her do all kinds of roles, the bohème, butterfly, all those roles she did so exquisitely, really, with a perfection of voice and of phrasing. And uh, as a she was a beautiful woman.
my very great pleasure to say something on the occasion of Elizabeth Redberg's anniversary because I feel that uh, there are so many young people today who are wildly enthusiastic uh, about singing, about opera, about music. And yet they cannot possibly have an appreciation and an awareness of the greatness and I would say without overstatement the uniqueness of Elizabeth Redberg as an artist. In the 1930s she was the only, but the only one who was equally at home and equally accepted in the Italian and the German repertoire. There has been no other artist until, I would say, the arrival of Birgit Nielsen uh, two decades later, who was so completely and totally accepted in these two completely divergent repertoires. If Elizabeth Redberg sang a Verdi Requiem or a Missa Solemnis, it was the most superlative art of singing. If she sang Siglin de Oraida, this kind of range she had, and nobody else had it at that time, and she was, I think, also the first in the history of the Metropolitan of whom this could be said. She sang with all the great conductors who have uh, 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 departed, and I myself am a very lucky man because Miss Redberg was the Sieglinde when I made my debut uh, as a conductor at the old Metropolitan Opera House in January of 1938. And so you realize that I speak with a great deal of feeling because my memories of her uh, are very personal, very uh, first-hand, and it is a joy to attempt to bring to the knowledge of another generation uh, what kind of a great artist she was. I am overjoyed and very happy that she is here to celebrate this anniversary and I together with so many of her friends, of her admirers, uh, wish her many happy returns. Wollen wir erwähnen, Thronen sein, kein Los und Kosten Herzen Frieden haben. Hell nach mein Weib, du dieser reine Frau.
You know, when you mentioned 50 years, <coughs> it seems that I know her only a few years ago. Redberg, when she came at the Met, was such a revelation because we had all kinds of soprano, but a singer like Redberg, we never had that. It was such a pure singing. It, it seems to come from above, you know but very high above. What we were used to was more or less on the ground floor, maybe in the basement. A red bird, when she sang in Italian, it sounds Italian. You know, uh, in French, it sounds like French, a French singer. That was the beauty of that, of that woman. Oh, my God. 